Bible. This is the Bible. Oh, they have the Holy Bible? Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, yep. Okay. Biblical Christian, evangelist, Trinitarian. Uh, how about you? What do you believe? I, I'm not that I'm atheist right now. You are? Yeah. Why is that? Because science is the way. Um, atheism and science have nothing to do with each other. In fact, if you're an atheist, then you have no way to explain the f uniformity of nature. Because think about it. If you are an atheist, and what, I, what is this? What if it's a cosmic accident? Yeah, exactly. So if it's a cosmic accident, you're talking about science, which is about order. It's about uncovering the... Like, science is not necessarily order. It could be chaos. There's so much chaos in science. How, how, like what? What is science? Define science for me. A study of... A study. Wait, wait. Okay, so it's a study, yeah. which means it's not chaos. So it's trying to it, put a sense to a chaotic reality. Okay, yeah. So it's a study of, from our perspective, because only it's only a human uh, perspective. Right? right. Science is only a human initiative from what we understand and mm -hmm. what we know about our mm -hmm. reality based on... See, but you're using words like reality, observation. Right. You've just said that this is a cosmic accident in chaos, right? Ooh, we don't even know. You can't even use the word accident. You don't know, we don't know, right? So this is just, right? But then you have accidental, you're just atoms falling through space and time, right? Maybe, we don't know. But then you posit that there's order. How do you have order out of chaos? How do you have order out of chaos? Mm. And how does your mind even ask that question? Because your mind is a result of chaos. And so you're trying to, you're, you have neurons firing in your cerebral cortex right now, right? right. Which is orderly. Right. right. And you're using reason with me. Right. But there is no reason in chaos and atheism. Right. So why are you arguing? I just, I don't, I, I don't believe there's a God. I get just, to me, it just seems like, it, it just doesn't, why, why would there have to be a okay. God for this to be? That's an excellent question. So let's just posit now that there is no God. Okay. It's just chaos. Okay. How are we going to communicate? Somehow the chaos wait, wait, how? aligns itself. How? How do you know? If you're part of the chaos, how do you know that chaos has aligned itself? Stay within your presuppositions. Right, right. But it, within chaos, you can, have, you can have a chaotic system that can unfold in, in an orderly way. It's why? One, How? one subset of that chaos happens to unfold in a sequence. See, what you're doing, you, you're using sequence. I, I'm going to do a contrast. The atheistic evolutionary mod podge that you have over here in biblical Christianity. I have order. I have logic. I have science. I have uh, reason. Uh, did I say logic already? I have logic, right, all over here. Because my worldview presupposes this book to be, and this book reveals that there's order, there's truth, there's ethics, there's epistemology, there's reality, right? Boom. Now, yours posits nothing. In fact, you can't even, David Hume, you ever hear of David Hume? He, Okay, David Hume said, and I learned this here at the Central Connecticut, I was a philosophy major. David Hume says that there is no uniformity of nature in an atheistic universe. You cannot determine, just because of one billiard ball hits another one, that there's actually a connection between the two in a chance random universe. That's an atheist saying this, if you want to be, li if you want to be consistent as an atheist. So what you're doing is, you're taking my Christian worldview of order, logic, sequence, time, and you're imposing it upon your atheistic worldview. So you cannot even think if you are an atheist. You have to borrow my Christian worldview. How do we know it has to be a Christian worldview? Why can't it be any of the other worldviews? Because there's no, no other way. The presuppositions of the Bible answer all the questions that have to be there. No one else does. See, that's why truth must be something that's revealed from outside of us rather than subjectively posited within the human being. But the book was written by you. No, it was inspired by God and human beings wrote it. Hey, how you doing? How you doing today? Good, I'm doing all right. So the, the book claims, I mean, the Bible claims thousands of times to be the Word of God. 
So as a, I'm a reform Christian, Calvinistic Christian, and I'm a presuppositionalist, research that. A presuppositionalist, everybody has presuppositions. What, the, what is a presupposition? It is something that you must assume to be true in order to have your worldview. So you're assuming in your worldview, using my Christian worldview, by the way, that we're just chaos. And if we are just chaos and there's just chance random processes, you can't argue. You've lost the argument. You've lost the debate over whether there's a God or not. Because if I hold you consistent with your own presuppositions, which are nothing, right? Nothing. But can't it come from nothing? How? How do you get... Wait, wait, you're... How can something come from nothing? You, the, the, borrow my Christian worldview. From, explain to me how something can come from nothing. But you want to presuppose it. You're going to say, but it did. See, that's a presupposition based upon what? I have a presupposition based upon a book that claims to be the authoritative word of God, inerrant and infallible. That's my presupposition. I could defend that and I could draw many conclusions from that, but I at least admit my presuppositions and follow through upon my presuppositions. You, there's nothing if you are consistent. So the Bible says, answer a fool according, do not answer a fool according to his folly lest you be like unto him. So your folly is in believing that there's nothing and there's something and there's order out of chaos, out of chance random processes. And so to hold you accountable to your worldview and say, be consistent, don't borrow from Christianity, you can't do it. But you're not going to get that because what happens is, even Wittgenstein, okay, Wittgenstein, um, he was a philosopher, and basically he wrote, uh, one of the most brilliant philosophers, he said, I'm going to presuppose, like how do we know that orange is orange and what I perceive in here is actually what's out there? He presupposed it, and he said at the end of his great philosophical works, everything that I wrote was like a ladder of water. Plato even did it. Plato, like, okay, Plato, there's the forms out there, right? Yeah, there's the forms out there. Where'd they come from? Um, the gods. And so he leaves his own worldview and he borrows something else because he has to assume something in order to make it work. So in order for your atheism to work, you have to take from my Christian worldview. But they're not going to teach you that here. Go into the science department. Even science. Now, let me, one more point. And I want you to think about this. I took analytical philosophy here. And I want you to think about this statement. In our analytical philosophy, I think it was A.J. Ayer that said that truth is only that which we can empirically verify. What do you think about that statement? It sounds like science. It does, doesn't it? How do you empir empirically verify that statement? How do you take... Truth, now look at the statement. Truth is only that which you can empirically verify. Is that a true statement? Not How do I? Because what if everything we've been doing has just been wrong? Exactly. So if truth is only that which I can empirically verify, it's a self, it's a self contradictory it's statement. Verified. It's like me saying, it's like me saying there are no absolutes. I absolutely know there are no absolutes. You don't know that. I just made an absolute statement. Exactly. It's self-contradictory. And your atheism is self-contradictory because you're trying to reason something out of reason. There's no reason in atheism. Order, sequence, there is no. Good. Science, there's no science in atheism. What if this is all just one simulation? Well, that would... See, you have to posit that. You have to, you, like the Matrix, you know, you're just a brain in a, right. you know, that. Right. You, you can't disprove that. I mean, non-verification is not a, 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 a standard of truth. You could posit that, but all you're doing is grasping at straws. You, you, to, that, to me, is harder to believe than this. You should read that book? Absolutely. I, th this book reveals to us, see, truth must be revealed. You can't determine what tr what's truth, right? You're going to find out truth must, if, if, if there is no God, let me follow this through morally now. If there is no God, okay? You got what you believe is right and I got believe, what I believe is right, okay? I made off Hitler. You don't, yeah. Do you agree with me? No? Yeah. You're dead. 
Right. And so what ultimately Darwin, atheistic Darwinism, a evolutionary, results in are the tyrants. So your atheism is actually behind and has caused more murder. Joseph Stalin, 60 million people. Adolf Hitler, 40 million people. Mao, what is he, 40 to 60 million people? But if I, if I, don't, I, don't, I don't have to believe in a God to know that what I'm doing is, like if I, if I choose to help people because I think that helping people is just, like it makes me feel good to make other people feel good. Okay. That's just, that's... Okay, but what if it makes a, a man feel good to molest children? That's not, that's not making other people feel good. It makes him feel good. That doesn't make it right. You just used the word right. How do you know it's right? Because he, you, wait, you determined, you are determining, this is what the Bible is all about. You are determining what's right. What's right is what makes me feel good. Well, this person over here says, eh, there is no God. So, survival of the fittest. He's, he's got a gun and he wants to molest children. What makes him wrong? How can you say that the that's that wrong? He's crossing boundaries of another living being. So, I mean, lions do it. Right, but they just, they, they don't molest their prey. They just simply kill it. Yeah, sometimes they do. I mean, I... I it depends how you define molestation. But they would be—they would just be—that's just animalistic. And yes, we're animals. See, but we what you greater ability to reason and do those things. So within that ability, it would make sense that you could say, "Hey, that's probably not." Probably. It's like. But you see, as an atheist, you can't talk about right or wrong. Because that's an objective reality, or you cannot say that another person is wrong. So the, the molester goes on, and you can't say he's wrong. That's the way he feels that that's right. I can say it's wrong because the Bible says that that's a sin, and that man ought to be executed. That's what I think. How do you explain the people that have used the Bible to justify crimes? Uh, people use all kinds of stuff. It's a wicked thing because the Bible is, is written in words. So we could go back into the scriptures, and we could forensically examine what the Bible says. For instance, if you want to use the Bible to justify murder. I'm going to kill these people because God killed people in the Old Testament. Well, I could turn to the, the, um, the law of God that says, Thou shalt not murder. I mean, all over the place. I don't have the right to murder. So I have an objective standard by which I can examine it. And we can, together, because you actually do believe somewhat in a Christian worldview, because otherwise you couldn't read. The order of the, these shapes turn into sounds, turn into words, turn into thoughts, turn into ideas. Where does that come from? Atheism, there's no meaning. I guess that makes sense. It does make sense. Yeah, so I previously th never saw a reason to believe in that, but I mean, yeah. you bring up a valid point, so. Yeah, and once, I'll take you one step further, not just, it's, I'm not a deist that there's a God out there. No, I am a Bible-believing Christian that the God that exists is the God is behind this scripture and if there is no if there if the God of this It's not even an if you can't even it, it's in, virtually impossible I'll give you the the greatest proof of cr biblical Christianity Biblical Christianity the impossibility of the contrary If you take this book and you disappear it you cannot prove anything the very foundation of proof itself is founded upon what this book reveals Get rid of it, you have nothing. You, you can't find it in the Quran. This book is superior to the Quran in every other book and every other aspect. By its own self-authentication. Yeah, it is interesting. It truly is. What's your name? Noah. Yours? Norman. Nice to meet you. Noah. I know, you know, it's very interesting. And during Noah's time, I mean, the whole world was so corrupt that God said, I got, I'm going to wipe out all of humanity, right? Yeah, that's cool. Very good. Well, you know, my name is Norman Patterson. Um, I, I do a YouTube channel. I'll be on, you know, YouTube. You can look it up. But um, it's a pleasure to talk. I'll be back. And yeah, and I appreciate your thoughts. And, and you know something? I believe you're making connections because it's not just because of reason, because the Spirit of God is helping you make that connections. Because Outside of Jesus Christ, you're dead in your trespasses and your sins. You're physically alive, but you're spiritually dead. But it is by the preaching and proclamation of the Word of God that the Spirit of God enlivens you, makes you born again, so that the blood of Jesus Christ who died 2,000 years ago would be applied to you, so that the punishment that Jesus Christ went under 
uh, um, 2,000 years ago can be applied to you as your sacrifice. That's what I believe. I stand before God, a forgiven man, justified in God's eyes. I'm as holy as Jesus Christ. Not because I think I'm better or, or good or whatever, because God has taken the righteousness of Christ and applied it to my soul. That's what justification by faith means. It doesn't mean I still don't sin because I have a body. I still do sin. But I got the Spirit of God in me helping me. And I've done my share. <laughs> Noah, it's a pleasure. pleasure you yeah. take care. Yeah. I'll take, take care. Take care.